In sports, the big mo can be everything. And by the big mo, I'm talking about momentum. Either you've got it or you don't. And you see that sometimes play out. When a team's got momentum on their side, it's amazing how many of the breaks go their way and how much more likely they are to win, and in particular, win championships. And you look at the WWE. This is a company that, in recent times, I think has really struggled to gain a foothold, really struggled to get that big mo in their favor, in their direction. Um, you know, it... it Last week, Raw, they got some momentum. I think they got a lot of momentum. You know, far more momentum even in the first half hour of that Raw show with Shane McMahon's return than they have from the entire Fast Lane. That's for damn sure. Anything between the Royal Rumble and Fast Lane. So it was something positive. And for a company who it's an important time for them, they really needed that momentum. And heading into the biggest show of the year and the biggest show that this company's had in quite some time in WrestleMania 32, a show that most certainly needed some positive momentum heading in that direction, the WWE did a good job of, if nothing else, creating some last week. So heading into this week, you're hoping they could do more of the same, build upon that, create even more positive momentum, get some big mo going in their favor, in their direction. I mean, what's going to happen with Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar? What's going to happen between Shane McMahon and Vince McMahon? What's going to happen between Triple H and Roman Reigns? You've got an announced return to The Undertaker. You know, with Triple Triple H taking out Roman Reigns in the bloody, bladed fashion he did last week. Maybe you know Rock is going to be there at WrestleMania 32. Maybe they fill that gap, fill that void. If Reigns is going to be there by having his family member, The Rock, there. You know, far-fetched maybe, but who the hell knows? Uh, you also know you got a number one contender's Divas match between Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. You know, maybe Kevin Owens does something coming off of his victory at Fastlane since they couldn't be bothered to book him on last week's Raw. You've got a Ryback character change. You're still going with the Dudley Boys character change. You've got Team Y2AJ. You've got the New Day. A lot of different things that could suggest that the WWE could build up some real positive momentum and continue to build on the positive momentum of last week and really get some nice goodwill going towards their biggest show of the year. Unfortunately, here's what we got instead. No Brock Lesnar, no Shane McMahon, no Roman Reigns. You have three money matches at WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar versus Dean Ambrose in a no-holds-barred street fight, which is kind of one of the fucking same anyways. I don't know why they bother calling it that, just to emphasize it. It's Department of Redundancy Department, if there ever was one. You've got Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker in Hell in a Cell. And you've got Roman Reigns versus Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Out of the six participants in those three money matches that this show is going to be built on the backs of, three of them weren't there. You know, they're... Having Roman Reigns miss, you can say, well, he's selling the injury. It's something seen to never really, really do. He'd just be right back. The problem is, though, is that it's coming across like they're trying to build up Roman Reigns as a sympathetic babyface. And he is not the type of babyface that works as a sympathetic babyface. And as a result, if you try to make him a sympathetic babyface, it is going to ultimately blow up in your face. And, oh, wait, that's exactly what the fuck is happening. He needed to be there. Broken knows it all. Didn't fucking matter. You got to go down the badass route with him. And speaking of badass, this company has no problem going down the badass route with Brock Lesnar because they never do anything to really make him look vulnerable. They never do anything to make him look like anything is a question. And this is wrong. And again, when you're talking about such a money match like Brock Lesnar versus Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania, you know, special attraction my ass. Brock Lesnar needs to fucking be there because this is part of the fundamental problem with this. These guys in these big money matches aren't there every fucking week. If they don't care enough to be there, why the fuck should we care enough to watch? Why should we care enough about their fucking match if they only bother showing up half the fucking time? I think it's a legitimate question, a legitimate issue. And above all else, above all else, the whole reason you start off with that big mo from last week was because of Shane McMahon's return. So you figure out the best way to follow up on that, the best way to continue to build on that momentum is take the one guy that people want to see more than anybody else, the one guy that has got more interest than anybody else heading into this WrestleMania season, instantly, just like that, and you decide to not put him on the show at fucking all. That was a huge miss and a huge mistake, in my opinion. Out of the six guys involved in your three money matches, half of them weren't there. And that's a problem, and that's not a good thing. So that's one strike against the show, of many. Then you do get The Undertaker. He's returned. He's coming to face off with Vince McMahon. And well, The Undertaker's never been one of those ones to espouse these blindingly awesome, magnificent oratories. You would have thought it would have been put together a little bit better than this. The Undertaker's return was frankly quite lame. The Undertaker's return was really quite disappointing. The Undertaker's return 
is all about the McMahons and Vince McMahon and the McMahon family, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But the problem here is it's so often the case with anything involving Vince McMahon today, it doesn't matter whether there's a story to it, we're just going to fucking go there. And frankly, in terms of story, there's not really a lot of story there at this moment, let's face it, between Shane McMahon and The Undertaker. And instead of trying to give us some attempt at some real story, other than Taker just saying, Shane's blood is on your hands, Vince is talking about writing him out of the will instead of being his son, it'll be a son of a bitch. It's just one of these splash factor type of deals where Vince thinks he's going to fool you. Vince thinks he's going to fuck with you. And Vince is going to try and convince you of something that is not the reality. The fact of the matter is, other than the fact that it's the curiosity of Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker, you need to give us some type of story, some type of reason to care about this match overall. We might care about the participants, but it doesn't necessarily mean we care about the two participants actually wrestling each other at WrestleMania 32, especially with something so big at stake. And furthermore, it comes again to the whole stupidity of so many things involving the McMahon authority and the McMahon uh, storylines with WWE. Shane McMahon is back. You're actually giving him an opportunity, no matter how fleeting an opportunity may be and how difficult or perhaps impossible an opportunity it is, to get control of Raw, the one thing he wants. So the so one thing he wants... So instead of doing everything you can to keep it from him, you actually give him an avenue, a pathway, somehow, some way, to actually make it happen. It makes no fucking sense at all. This week we get Stephanie McMahon's acceptance speech. And bitch Steph is always best Steph. There's no question about that. But here's a fundamental problem with devoting multiple minutes of television time to Stephanie McMahon in this acceptance speech. That just wasn't necessary. It literally was a time filler, and we all fucking know it. Is at the end of the day, this is the problem with female authority figures in professional wrestling as a whole. Even if you build up a bunch of heat on them, there's never really a blow-off to it. There's never really like a comeuppance to it. They don't typically get physically involved, in particular with the male performers. This is something that could be a problem throughout the years with some of the female managers, no matter how good or great they were at getting their... A wrestler over getting heat on themselves, getting heat on the wrestler, and transitioning that to that wrestler, and transitioning that heat to that wrestler. The bottom line is, is where's the ultimate payoff? The genius of somebody like a mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, a James Cornette, somebody like a Bobby the Brain Heenan. You could sit there and dress up Bobby the Brain Heenan in a weasel suit, and you could put him in a six-man take. You could do the same thing with Jim Cornette. You could get him up on the scaffold and have him fucking fall down. You could sit there and do things with the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. You just really don't do those type of things with Stephanie McMahon. So it's like you're building up all this heat to get her all this attention and hoping it kind of spins off onto Triple H and onto other people. And it just doesn't really work and it just isn't really the same. And as a result, a lot of things involving Stephanie on television, frankly, end up being an exercise in futility and a complete waste of fucking time and how appropriate is that in today's WWE. But let's look at what else we had. Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch. Frankly, this match wasn't very good. Lots of awkwardness, many botches. And then you get that finish, that draw finish, and it's just, it falls flat. I mean, I guess you're trying to be a little bit creative. It just, you've got Charlotte sitting ringside the whole time and doesn't get involved. Maybe if you want to do a draw or a double disqualification or something, double count out, you get her involved. It's just, the match wasn't very good, and then the result just left people like, Ugh. and it wasn't one of those, I want to see where they go next, because you already know where they're going next. So why even fucking bother wasting our time doing anything else? Just fucking go there and launch right into it. I just don't get it. Kevin Owens wins the Intercontinental Championship two weeks ago on Raw. Then he successfully defends the title against Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler at the pay-per-view to come back here where he wasn't on Raw last week, the Raw after Fastlane. Now he's here on Raw and he's losing to Big Show via count-out doesn't fucking matter. It's this 50-50 bullshit booking that gets nobody over in this goddamn company. Why do we have Owens win a bunch just to lose a bunch, just to lose his title, just to lose some more, just to win the title, then win, and then come back and lose? That makes no fucking sense. How the fuck is anybody ever supposed to get over doing this shit? And speaking of not getting over shit, you got the Miz squashing Dolph Ziggler in like two well. <laughs> let, me re let me rephrase that. That got the Miz over quite a bit with me, frankly. But we are using segments on Raw, fallouts, and crap like that to lead to matches on Raw. Who the fuck cares? And when it comes to Dolph Ziggler again, why would anybody fucking like him? <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. You got Bray Wyatt sitting there doing some goddamn promo talking about how he's going to conquer like he's conquered everybody else. Who the fuck is this asshole conquer? That's one thing if he says crazy shit, you expect his character to be crazy. He's just a fucking moron. Who the fuck has he ever really truly conquered? 
And what the hell point was there to do that whole segment? There was none. You've got Ryback beating Adam Rose just shortly after Adam Rose had beaten Titus O'Neil on a Raw, which again is just another evidence of 50-50 booking of why nobody fucking gets over. Oh, it's Ryback. It's some big character change. If you're going to do some big character change, then when he's in the match with Adam Rose, when he's sitting there and wailing on Adam Rose for more than five seconds, maybe the ref should disqualify him, and then Ryback just squashes the dude and fucking walks out. I like the fact that he didn't wait for his hand to get raised after he won. He just fucking walked out, but fucking who cares about wins or losses? Just smash people. Fucking Ryback smash. You know, feed me more of my ass. Ryback smash. And people talking about this is some fucking heel turn. It ain't a fucking heel turn. It's not even a face turn. Because at the end of the day, where the fuck is this company going with it? They don't fucking know. They'll lose interest within it in probably a month to six weeks. There's no long-term vision here. There's no long-term plan here. There's no real purpose or consequence to what they're doing with Ryback. It's just floating something fucking out there, and in a couple of weeks, they'll lose interest, and they'll be back to wasting their fucking time with this guy, who should be a much bigger deal than he fucking is. You've got Team Y2AJ beating the New Day, and apparently they're getting a tag title shot next week on Raw, whatever, I guess. Here's my thing is if you're going to end up using this as yet another excuse to give us one more match between Chris Jericho and AJ Styles at WrestleMania, why even bother? We've already had them wrestle several times. It would have been a much more effective way to do this if they would have teamed up from Jump Street, you know, that Raw after Royal Rumble and going forward, maybe even put the titles on them temporarily and then have them lose it and have that be the impetus to split off. And now you've got AJ versus Jericho at WrestleMania. Holy shit, that mid-card match, that can mean a lot. This has never happened before. This is something interesting. This is something that I would like to see. But instead, they've already wrestled several times, and now they're going after the tag titles. And let's say you actually do have them go after the tag titles. If you're doing this, why are you giving them a tag shot? I, I guess here's my thing. The Dudley boys have changed characters. You've got the Usos, you've got the New Day, now you throw Chris Jericho and AJ Styles into the mix. Fucking TLC match, WrestleMania 32, stop wasting time, start building up interest in that, start building up animosity and tension between all four of these fucking teams, and just let them go out there and fucking steal the show on April 3rd. It's that simple. It's that simple. But then I think my single biggest problem with this show, among the many problems that I had with this week's Raw that was not very good and was a very, very difficult sit-through, is what they're doing with Triple H and Dean Ambrose. My thing is, is if you're not going with Triple H versus Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania, then you need to step as far the fuck away from that as possible because what you're going to end up doing is you're going to confuse your audience. And that's exactly what this company is going to do. And they are too fucking stupid, apparently, to see that they are indeed going to confuse their audience. Does anybody really think that God is going to lose at Roadblock to Dean Ambrose? Does anybody really think Triple H is going to be handing over the belt to Dean Ambrose? So again, it's a fucking waste of time. So what, Roman Reigns could go back and help out his boy so Brock Lesnar could come out and fucking interfere and it could be all types of schmozzy shit or Triple H beats Dean Ambrose and then you make Ambrose look stupid as you're trying to really, you should be trying to build him up to face off the biggest monster you've got, the top baby face you got in Brock fucking Lesnar! You're confusing your audience because now... Instead of sending them completely down the Triple H Roman Reigns path and trying to figure out ways to make the audience care about that and get them engaged and invested in that, you're giving them an out. And you're giving them a diversion and an alternative and an alternative, frankly, that a lot of the hardcore fans are going to already like more and naturally have more appeal with, and that is Triple H versus Dean Ambrose. And this again comes to the whole stupidity of when the McMahons and the Helmsleys and Praise God and all that shit, and when they're involved with uh, decision-making power, Dean Ambrose wants a title shot. Dean Ambrose wants to wrestle Triple H. Triple H is under no obligation to do this. Why in the fuck would he put the title on the line heading into the biggest show of the year to the point where it's even a possibility that he wouldn't be the champion heading into the biggest show of the year? Does that make any fucking sense whatsoever? And again, it says so often the case with anything that involves the McMahons or frankly Triple H as well, the company just doesn't care about trying to develop or cultivate any type of real story because the whole deal is supposed to be about what these guys are doing and what that's doing. And, you know, it's the awesomeness of seeing the McMahons on television and seeing Triple H wrestle in a match at a big show like WrestleMania. And at some point in time, people have to get invested in it and people have to have a reason to care. And now they're going to start to care about Ambrose, not in the way you want him to care about Ambrose, not in the sense that they want to see him beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, but that they want to see Triple H lose the title at that Roblox or whatever the fuck it's called 
to Dean Ambrose, and then they want Dean Ambrose to carry the strap into WrestleMania. You're confusing your fucking audience. This company is guilty of that far too often. And at the end of the day, this is why people don't fucking get over. And even the guys that could unanimously get over with all segments of the audience, like Dean Ambrose even, fans get confused and they don't know where to really go. A lot of people naturally like Dean Ambrose. So why not send them in one path with one clear vision, one clear direction, and you go balls deep and you go all in on it? Instead of using Dean Ambrose here as a plot device to advance a story between Roman Reigns and Triple H in their world title match at WrestleMania 32. It's just, I did not like it. I like the interaction between Triple H and Ambrose, don't get me wrong, but in terms of what it represents and what it means, bigger picture, I fucking detest this. I think this is ridiculous and it just speaks to more of the stupidity of what this company did this week. In one week to me, the WWE took something positive, which was getting some big mo that they had gotten out of last week's Raw and completely undermined it at every chance they got. And it's very clear at this particular point in time that this is all about one thing. It's all about the road to McMahon mania. Some of you might call it Triple H mania, whatever the case might be. It's McMahon mania. And I understand this kind of territorial mindset of the sense that, you know, when things aren't going great, who can you count on the most? You can count on Vince. You can count on Stephanie. You can count on Triple H. To a lesser degree now, apparently, you can count on Shane. You can count on the McMahons. They're proven commodities, and you know their work to a degree. But at some point in time, where are you going to get with that? And at some point in time, we know how it is with the WWE. Whenever it involves the McMahons and anybody involved with the McMahon family by relation or anything else, that they tend to be overpowering. They tend to become the singular primary focus of everything. And everything else kind of falls by the wayside. And you watch this week's Raw, you saw exactly what I just talked about there. Everything else, frankly, fell by the wayside. It was all about something pertaining to the McMahon family. It's McMahon left. It's McMahon right. It's McMahon straight up your fucking billion dollar ass cracks. It just, if it's not a McMahon... It doesn't matter. If it doesn't involve a McMahon, and it doesn't matter. And that's not a way to build a great momentum heading into your biggest, most important show, not only of this year, but that you've had in quite some time. Furthermore, it's not a way to create a completely compelling and interesting WrestleMania 32 card. It's not the best way to go about doing business, in my opinion. I mean, the whole fact, again, is that the 70-year-old-plus uh, billionaire owner of the company matters more than 99% of the roster. And in reality, yes, he does. In the real world, yes, he does. But he shouldn't on camera. He shouldn't on screen. The mid-40s, 14-time world champion matters more than the young lion up-and-comer Roman Reigns who's trying to take that throne from him. Stephanie McMahon, somebody who may very well not even have a match at WrestleMania 32, matters more than 99% of the roster. And that's a problem. Shane McMahon matters more than the rest of the roster and he didn't even bother being here this week. You know, Brock Lesnar, the only other non-McMahon you could sit there and talk about, he wasn't even there this week. A lot of other 50-50 and pointless bookings. Again, if the biggest names involved in the biggest matches at the biggest show of the year and the biggest show in quite some time can't be bothered to fucking show up, it makes it seem like they don't fucking care. Why should the fans fucking care? And I just can't believe how ridiculous this company was this week, in my opinion. Maybe my opinion alone, I don't know. They took so much of the goodwill and so many of the good things they had done the previous week and completely undermined them, shit all over them, and fucking ruined it with what they did with this week's Raw. Boom.